Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. The uh, Public Works Committee will come to order. Um, and before I begin with the consent agenda, let me just note that no one has <laughs> signed up to address any particular item. Is that an oversight? Okay. Um, if, um, if we get to an item that you're here specifically to speak on, you should please let me know, because otherwise we could just pass you by. Um, as usual, we have a general agenda and a consent agenda. The items on the consent agenda will be adopted by a single motion without discussion, if, unless any of those are pulled for further discussion. I don't have any word from staff that any of those need to be pulled. Uh, do any council members wish to pull one of the items from consent? Yes. C1. C1. Anything else? Move approval of the balance. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Those in favor of approving items C2 through C6, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, no? Uh, that's adopted. And for anyone who is particularly tracking the resolutions on I-74, Business 40, they were just approved in the consent agenda. So thank you for coming. I know that there are some folks who have been following those. We appreciate your, uh, um, your hard work on those. Thank you. Uh, then let's go to item C1, please. Item C1, petition to close and abandon a portion of the Con Lane in the East Ward, petition of Crackle Barrel Old Country Store Incorporated. And reporting on this item will be. Mr. Chairman? I'll do it. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, this is a portion of a road that's physically been barricaded by the NCDOT Union Cross Road Widening Project. Uh, the Cracker Barrel Corporation has requested the formal closure and abandonment through the legal process. Staff recommends approval of that contingent upon the construction of the alternative roadway that you'll see on page 89 of your agenda book. Um, so we recommend council approve it and staff will not file the paperwork for the replatting until such time as the new roadway is dedicated. Mr. Gamer. And uh, that was actually one I wanted to bring up on this. Um, again, particularly looking at this neighborhood in this area, uh, one of the concerns, and I know when we approved last year, I believe, the uh, site plan um, for this area for the development, um, it was in reference to the traffic and the traffic flow that's going to come back towards some of the neighborhoods on that side. Um, <clears throat> and I actually believe that this will help better with that traffic coming out because you're going to have a signal light um, on the other end there that I think is going to help traffic come out a little better there. Um, but I just wanted to pull that uh, for discussion just to, so that there could be some discussion about that. We have a very active neighborhood association in that area. And so um, with that said, I move approval of the item. Second. Okay. Further discussion? If not, those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed, no? That's approved. Thank you very much. And we will move to the general agenda. And I will note one change. In the general agenda, uh, item G3 should be moved to the first item for discussion. Uh, we have staff who has uh, committed to a neighborhood meeting at 7. Uh, and uh, so uh, let's go ahead and, and handle that. Let's move, please, to item G3. Item G3, report on sinkhole on private property. 3490 and 3500 Cedar Post Road in the South Ward. Thank you. Mr. Turner and Mr. Huff. Mr. Huff is going to give you the update on the answers to questions that were raised last month about the effects or the causes for the stormwater flow problems that are occurring on Cedar Post. Thank you. Mr. Huff. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, uh, last month this item was brought up as an informational piece. Uh, committee members had uh, uh, several follow-up questions. Uh, first question uh, was, if the development was in the city at the time of the construction of the, the drainage system, and uh, uh, two, was the cause of the sinkhole what we believe uh, contributed to the failure of this drainage system? And also, if contributions from any adjacent developments, i.e. the Walmart to the north of the subdivision or Peters Creek proper, uh, Parkway proper, uh, contributed to the failure of the drainage system. 
with regard to the development, it was in the city at the time of construction. Uh, the Board of Aldermen at the time uh, approved the annexation April 20th, two, uh, 1976, and Cedar Post Road was accepted for maintenance on October 4th of 1985, so it was in the city at the time of construction. Uh, with regard to failure, staff has conducted an inspection of the drainage system overall. Uh, we believe that the failure of this system was due in large part of omitting an in-treatment device, a, a head wall or a concrete uh, structure at the tail end of the piping system. In your uh, agenda packet, you have a, a rudimentary profile on, uh, on page 25 kind of shows the, uh, the right-of-way as it goes off of Cedar Post and then the 24-inch system as it goes to the, uh, the outlet side. Very steep slope. The, the pipe was constructed in highly erodible soils. Typically speaking, we see these with a head wall on the tail end and rip-wrap energy dissipation. We could not find any evidence of, of those in-treatment device being present here. So. The conjunction of no in treatment, highly erodible soils are the cause of the failure of the system. Uh, moving on to um, adjacent developments and, and possibly contributing to uh, uh, failure of this piping system on uh, page, I'm sorry, page 23 of your uh, agenda books, we have an overview. Just to kind of orient you, on the right side of the page, we have the northbound and southbound lanes of Peters Creek Parkway, Walmart development in the center, and to the uh, right, or excuse me, left side of the page, the southwest quadrant of this map, we see the drainage network as it flows through this area. Uh, we have put the pre-development stream uh, conveyance systems on the map to show that basically pre-development the stream system started in what is now the center of the Walmart building and flowed toward the southwest but it did not go into the Cedar Post drainage system at all. Post-development the Walmart discharge goes to the northwest quadrant of the uh, development enters into the tributary at Stafford Village and then flows to the southwest. So we've been able to determine that Walmart did not discharge or contribute any type of runoff to this drainage network at the Cedar Post subdivision. Uh, moving on to Peters Creek, the southbound lane of Peters Creek does contribute a small amount of discharge into this system, but it is only at the intersection. Looking at the pipe sizes and how it conveys to the, uh, the outlet in at the 3,500 properties, we do not believe that this overwhelms the system or exacerbates any flows. So with those questions, uh, or with that investigation, we believe that uh, Walmart nor Peters Creek contributed to any kind of exacerbating effects to the, to the failed system at the 34, 90, and 3,500 properties. With that, I'll be happy to answer any questions. <coughs> Excuse me, I did think of a question. Um, the um, the infrastructure that is within the public right of way at this point uh, are any of the problems that you identified items that would have gone there within the public right of way? As far as problems, it's, it's probably the the. the the absence of the riprap, the absence of the headwall. If it were being constructed in the right of way, yes, those are requirements or infrastructure standards that would normally be present if it were constructed in the right of way, yes, sir. But if I'm understanding your question, no, those were not constructed in the right of way. The failure devices were not in the right of way. So the devices, they weren't there, but um, should they have been there if it had been constructed to our current standards? If they were built in the right of way, as Mr. Tuff is saying, yes, but they were constructed or not constructed on private property. Okay. Um, either my question is not clear or I'm not understanding the answer. Um, uh, Riprap headwall physically to work in this location, where should they have been? 
They should have been at the outlet end of the pipe where it discharged at the at the back end of the private property. So okay. on, got, private okay. property. Yeah, on, on private property. On private property. So there was no point at which the the city overlooked the absence of uh, yes sir uh, none of this area would have been under the purview of city inspectors or city enforcers during the installation right. of so there is no present retrofit of system on city right away or city property that would keep the problem from worsening correct Okay, that's right. Thank you. Yeah, two questions. Mr. Clark. Under current code, I get, and I guess building codes or state code, are you required to put this wall and riffraff in now? Uh, I'm not. I'm not very uh, versed in the building code, but uh, we look at this as a private drainage system, and is the responsibility of the property owner of record. So we, I don't know of any code that we would compel the property owner to put it in. I'm not aware of any state building code that applies okay. to this system. And secondly, have we communicated this information to the folks that were here at the last meeting? We have had uh, discussions with the property owners out in the field during yeah. our, our time of estimating the cost share yeah. value. So they have been privy to that information that uh, if, if the city were to come back under the 7030 policy, yeah. that would be one of the items that we would implement. But I mean, have they seen the fact that the Walmart drains a different direction? No, we have not discussed that with them. I would suggest we just send a letter to Mr. Grace, who was the attorney, and just maybe just, this is public record, right? Just send them, send them that. Well, I, I, I don't think we need a formal motion to do that, if that's the consensus of the committee. Um, Mr. Ruff, one other question as a factual matter. Are there any less comprehensive steps in the full fix that could um, either substantially slow or stop the progress of the sinkhole's expansion at this point? There Half are a measures. couple of smaller fixes, but they are temporary. I would call them Band-Aid at, at best. Um, the difficult situation about this item is it's so close between the two properties or dwellings and, and this is eroding at such an accelerated rate. It's literally feet from the structure, uh, one of the structures, so anything we do would be a band-aid other than replacing the pipe, backfilling it, installing the correct entry. One other thing that I might suggest for consideration. Um, depending on the committee's reaction. Uh, speaking with our city attorney about this, um, uh, I, I learned or confirmed that uh, the only measure that we have currently available, you know, other than the 7030 uh, program, is uh, it is possible for the city to uh, inspect and determine that a sinkhole is a nuisance. Um, so find and notify the, the property owner of an obligation to repair and if they fail to do so then seek a court order to abate, allowing the city to abate uh, and then placing the, um, uh, the, the cost of that abatement as a lien on the properties. Um, it might be appropriate to simply you know, communicate that information to Mr. Grace as the attorney for the uh, uh, for at least one of the property owners. That's clearly a, a, a less desirable option, um, but to the best of my understanding, and, and this, the assistant city attorney is, is here to confirm this, um, that's the only thing other than the 7030 policy within our current uh, legal purview that we can do and you know, there's no it, my understanding from the city attorney's office is that we do not have the legal authority to simply come in and pay for 100 percent of the cost mm -hmm. there is no policy under which we can do that even if we decided we wanted to which would of course set a new precedent and new program but um anyway but I, yeah, i'm getting head nods that yes i understood ms carmen correctly on these points you did yeah, sir. Um. yeah okay. 
Yes, Council Member. Um, our current ordinance permits a 70-30 cost share. It does not permit 100% of the cost to be paid by the city. We do have the nuisance abatement provision for sinkhole as well. Um, they would have five days. We would send a notice of the violation. They would have five days to abate the nuisance, after which we could summarily abate the nuisance and then charge the costs. If the costs are not paid, then they are lien on the property where the nuisance occurred. They're also a lien on any other property owned by the owner of the property where the nuisance occurs within the city or within one mile of the extraterritorial jurisdiction of the city. This is not necessarily an action that the city would want to take, but it's something that we have the authority to do if, for example, the sinkhole should expand to threaten the public street. Uh, Mr. Montgomery. It, um, with the 70-30 as it is, again, we pretty much understand that. But with that process, is there not a payment plan structure that we have associated with that? Isn't, yes, and how does that actually work with the payment plan? Basically, the, the property owner soliciting the cost share would have five years to pay back uh, their portion, the 30% portion of, of the, the fix. Um, the interest rates vary, but uh, they would have up to five years to pay that portion back. Right. And that was just something I wanted to make sure it was understood as well, because I, I don't necessarily think it's as reasonable to think that sometimes when things like this happen, as much as you try to plan for things, you know, you just, everybody can't go to the bank and just say, hey, we're going to fix this. And even on the noose and abatement side, I even think we might need to relook at that, because even in looking at it, I think it's, it's unrealistic to say with the, this type of thing, with the sinkhole like this, to say, hey, you, this needs to be fixed in five days. You're talking about somebody cutting their grass? Yeah. Uh, but this, I don't think so. Yeah, I think that that was simply a description of the legal authority, mm -hmm. not a, an action plan. Yes, I believe that um, uh, in, in actuality, property owner would be afforded longer than five days to actually fix the sinkhole. Thank you. Uh, Mr. McIntosh. So each one, this is, the 30% is going to be shared by the two adjoining properties? In I theory, think, although... 70, 15, 15. It's our understanding that the um, uh, adjoining property uh, is uh, in foreclosure. Right. That's my second question. But so the first, so the property owner that still owns the property, his share is eighteen thousand six hundred dollars. Is that right? No. It's, it's yeah. Thirty-five. As, as far as the cost 25. share, yeah, cost share that was given originally was done in two thousand eleven. So it okay. was timed out. We would have to go back and reevaluate uh, based on the current size and the amount okay. of materials that that would be utilized to to repair okay. this. So it it would increase. Okay. To go to the foreclosure question, would any lien that we place on that property be subordinated to the? primary loans so when it goes into foreclosure would our position go away essentially <clears throat> your question council member again if this property is in foreclosure and we yes. put a lien on it yes would our lien survive the foreclosure process um, it depends on if it's junior or senior to the lien that's being foclosed on and if it's um, I'm, I'm not terribly familiar with that process but I believe if it's uh, one or the other it would be paid off in foreclosure. And it, I believe it's, if it's a junior lien. If it's senior, it may survive. And I may have that backwards, council member, one or the other. And list, list pendants survive, is that, isn't that right? I believe they do. Yeah. So I'm not sure if this would be a list pendants or not. And I don't know if you can answer that. But my, my question is whether, whether we get any of that back if that property's in foreclosure. Now, if... And this may be collateral to the question you're asking, Council Member, but if we did do a nuisance abatement action and the cost of abatement were a lien on the property, now that lien would have the same priority and could be collected in the same manner as ad valorem property taxes. And if um, the property owner did not pay the cost of abatement within 60 days, it would be sent to the tax office, and then the tax office would um, take one of uh, three or four different steps in order to collect the money owed they could intercept tax refunds. They would add it to the property tax bill as well. Thank you. So, um, in, in other words, if um, if the nuisance option were pursued and there were costs incurred uh, during that process, that would 
survive yeah. the foreclosure. Yeah. Right, thank you. Uh, Mr. Taylor. Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the City Council, I think uh, based on what I'm hearing, it only sounds like we have one option. Uh, it doesn't look like we have the legal authority to pay 100% uh, of the cost. Uh, I think the suggestion has been submitted to send a letter to Mr. Grace uh, notifying him as the attorney of our options, the 7030 program, or the alternative option of nuisance abatement. I don't know if a, no, a motion is necessary to do that, but I feel like that's the, the way we need to go at this point. Okay. Uh, are there any objections to that? If not, we can do that by committee consensus, I believe. Wait. Yes. Is the motion to file the nuisance? No. No. What is the motion? Uh, it's on the letter. I understand the motion. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Notifying them of both options, nuisance abatement or continuing on with the 7030 program. And Mr. Taylor, if you want to make that informal motion, we can certainly treat that as a, as a committee action. I, I move for the motion as presented. All right. Is there a second? Any discussion? Those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? We'll do that. Thank you. Agenda G1, please. Item G1. Resolution granting an encroachment agreement to art for art's sake for an archway to be located across 6th Street in the East Ward. Right. And thank you, Mr. Ruff, by the way. And presenting here will be Mr. Turner. Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, this is a request for encroachment of a structure that will go on 6th Street. If you turn to page 5 in your package, you'll see a diagrammatic location of where the structure would go. On page 6, you'll see an aerial photograph showing the area. And on page 9, you'll see an actual photographic artist rendering of what the structure would look like. Uh, the intent of this would be to identify that you're entering the arts district with a specialized structure. It would be a sign on a uh, rigid mount. Uh, it qualifies as a sign encroachment, and therefore we're recommending council approval as opposed to doing this as a staff approval. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Also, Harry Nab with the Arts for Arts State group is here if you have any questions about specifics on the structure. Thank you. Mr. McGovern. Um, conceptually, I, I think this is, is, is something I think is, will be good and good for the area. Um, and again, thank you for those who helped bring this forward. Question or concern I have is over time, I didn't see anything in here in reference to ongoing maintenance or attention to the item to, you know, done, you know, 20 years from now, if it's Safety. rusting, if it's Safety. somebody hit it or something and it's going to fall over, how do we make sure that that's taken care of? As with all encroaching devices, it retains, the ownership is retained by the agency request the encroachment and the maintenance is therefore their responsibility. If it becomes a nuisance, then staff would have the authority to remove it. Your standard encroachment language allows for the removal for that purpose, or if a project comes along that would, would require the city to use that space, the city retains the right to require the removal or to remove the encroaching device. And I hope that the arts for art's sake stays around indefinitely, but if they were to go away, what then? If they have successors or heirs, if you will, then it would revert to them. And if not, then the city would have to decide whether it wanted to donate it to someone else if they abandon it or if they didn't transfer it to someone else themselves. Okay. Mr. Taylor. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I just want to say that, you know, as a city, uh, we're beginning to, to officially uh, brand ourselves. I think branding this particular district as, as the Arch District is uh, something that will be official. I'd like to thank Arts for Art's sake, uh, Mr. Nab, and all of the representatives. I see Mr. Miller's here as well for the good work that you're doing uh, downtown and for uh, everywhere all over the city. I've had the opportunity to meet with him about this project, and uh, to me, it seems like it's a no-brainer. Uh, they're not asking anything from the city other than right away to put the structure there. Uh, I believe this structure is being paid for 100 percent out of funds from Arts for Art's sake. Uh, it's, it, it, it is a wonderful way to brand the city, and it doesn't seem like any way we can lose. If, as Councilman Montgomery mentioned, if things start to fall in disrepair, we could put uh, nuisance abatement or, or, or anything on, on, the, on the particular structure, go out and repair it. Uh, this is good for the city, and this is something I'm supporting. So I will make a motion at the appropriate time, Mr. Chairman. All right. Uh, Ms. Adams. Yes, I think I want to do a correction to the, uh, the item. It's in the North Ward. Uh. It's not? 6th Street in trade? 
going to have a fight over it? Six and cherry. I mean, six and cherry. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. The line cuts on the back side of, of trace. We'll Street. double check it before it goes Please. to council if this committee forwards it. Please, because six and vine is mine. We'll I know. With one one of the things uh, I think it's a great idea, and you all have heard me say before that, again, when you go to other major metropolis areas, branding a destination location is part of the marketing of cities. If you go to San Francisco, there's Chinatown, and there's the the down the the dock. What is it? Uh, <coughs> Downtown, the dock where you buy the fish and you go eat. Oh, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. Fisherman's Wharf. Wharf. Yeah. If you go to D.C. or Baltimore, you have Italian neighborhoods and German neighborhoods and whatever. I think uh, it's great. Uh, I personally have been, a part of my Polo Cherry is to designate a destination location in the North Ward with branding. That's what this is. But uh, my concern is because we have another item on the agenda, I think, about honorary signs. How does this fall into this that other neighborhoods and communities and groups will want to put these up? And to Council Member Montgomery's, I think it's a great idea. I'm not trying to, but I'm just saying I have to I think like this. When you start talking about putting these up, again, the safety thing, Mr. Turner, who's liable if this object falls? Just if. You know, it falls. Who's liable, us or the? <laughs> yeah, get, yeah, let's get the, the attorney speak. Uh, he's a responsible. <laughs> Good evening. Hi. The, the, the encroachment agreement would have some language in there imputing the liability okay. on the, the encroacher. Okay. And, and again, uh, our fellow council members, with what's on the agenda about the signs, the honorary signs. How are we going to determine this? I mean, is it everywhere someone thinks that their neighborhood or event place wants one of these? Do we put them up? I mean, now, we got to be thinking fast forward here because you got an, an article on here about honorary signs. I think we need to be proactive as we move forward on this as well, uh, Mr. Chair. Okay, this is an encroachment agreement which has to be approved by committee or council? Full council. Full council, that's right. Um, and so th these, these are not things that neighborhoods or districts can do without the council's review and approval. I understand that, Mr. Chair, but now we have all of these honorary road signs and then we got our emergency responders and other people that come to the city. I think we, I'm not trying to make a big deal out of it, but I'm thinking in terms of if this is the first and someone sees it, once we do this, others will come. I just need to make sure we got the right mechanisms in place to be able to understand how many of these are we going to put up to, because going into the honorary road signs, we weren't around then, but now we see that everybody wants one. Then we got the historic markers that go up. I think we need to start looking at this because it, it could become a, a problem <laughs> for the appearance of aesthetics, sure. you know? Are, are you suggesting that staff begin to work on a policy? Yes, sir. Letter? Yes, sir. <laughs> do, you, do you feel a need to hold action on this item? No, I don't feel the need to hold action on it, but I think as we move forward, uh, we've seen it when we got the first or two or three honorary signs. Now everybody wants one for somebody or something. And the, the markers that the historic preservation people give, every time they designate, we got one of those too. We just need to understand logistically where all these markers and signs are going. Right, very good. And then the staff can certainly please uh, begin to review that. Certainly. I'll make a motion that we approve G1. Second. All right. Mr. Chairman, discussion. Just quick discussion. Yes. I, I just make a suggestion that we uh, approve these types of signs, possibly when staff goes back to look at it, and only council approved districts. So whether it might be the entertainment district, the arts district, any district that the council uh, approves, uh, I think we would limit these types of signs to those relative districts. And that's a, that's a way that it doesn't quite get out of control and there's checks and balances on the council level. But 
when staff comes back with the, with the uh, presentation, I guess we'll discuss it at that time. Yeah, okay. I think that's a good idea. Further discussion? Hearing none, uh, those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, no? That's approved. Thank you. Item G2, please. Item G2, resolution of adopting a revised honorary street naming policy. Mr. Turner. Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, uh, you talked about this a couple of months ago and essentially gave staff direction to go back and implement the NCDOT mandated requirements for a revised policy. Uh, we do reference the fact that there is a list of permanent honorary signs in your package. It actually got left out, so it's at your places, and it looks like this. So uh, that was one of the questions the committee had, but essentially what we're doing is bringing you a resolution, recommend, we're recommending a resolution to you to adopt a revised policy consistent with the NCDOT rules for honorary signs on state roadways. Be happy to answer any questions. Questions? Mr. Clark. They're going to have to come up with a different type sign to meet the state code. I'm sorry? It's a different sign to meet the state code now. Different it, type of sign. You'd have a ground mount sign, but we have those. And that's what I mean. It's, yes. Who's going to pay for that? The city currently pays for honorary signs, but certainly council, if you chose, could have a policy revision that says that the petitioner is responsible. I share Ms. Adams' concern. <laughs> The rate we're going every street in town is going to have somebody's name on it. Uh, and I just think if these people, whoever made these not requests, should pay for the sign. Agreed. I, I thought that the uh, proposed policy indicates the last item. We did change that. I apologize. We did change it so that now they're responsible. Right. So yeah. for this change, if they want it to stay up, they got to buy the new. They'll be paying for it. Yes, sir. The okay. financial right. sponsor for the designation must be identified at the time of the request to the mayor's office. I think that's yeah. good. Okay. Other questions? Other discussion? Move approved. Second. Discussion of the motion. Those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, no? That is approved. Thank you. Item G4. Item G4, report on sidewalk bond project. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, as you know, the city council is considering the possibility of a bond package. Uh, one of the elements of that bond package is uh, approximately $8 million, no, $8 million for sidewalk renovations. What staff has done is gone through and identified based upon the sidewalk criteria that currently exists, the sidewalk ranking criteria that we currently have, realizing that this committee talked about staff going back and developing a new criteria in the future, but for the current criteria that we use, we have given you staff's recommendations for sidewalk projects that would roughly equate to $1 million per currently listed ward, and we realize that we need to go back and readjust these because it's based upon the old ward map, we think, but we will make those revisions and bring it back to you. But this is essentially just a starting point for discussion and a request for your feedback and direction as to whether this is an appropriate listing for you to begin your work on telling us what projects that the council will want to have for sidewalks in the final bond package. The, elect, uh, the voters will be voting on the size of the package. They obviously won't be picking them in individual projects, but at some point council will have to pick and decide what projects you want on that list. So today, this is the discussion item. Are there questions or comments? Uh, Mr. Montgomery, then Mr. Clark. Well, um, mine goes back again, I think, which you already noted um, before in reference to the fact that some of them may be out of whack. One I do want to draw attention to, which is on my agenda, page 37, East Ward, map 303, the Parish Road um, sidewalk piece. Um, back in the Northeast Ward, right? Yeah. And so I would like to touch on that one. And the other piece of that is um, I have a It'd be interesting for me in terms of just having some dialogue with the list of those rankings of work streets that I've seen on sidewalks. And then I do have a town hall meeting coming up on this Thursday, and I'd be interested in having that as a part of dialogue with some of the citizens there as well. Mr. Clark. Uh, two things. It would be nice on these maps to show what ex sidewalks exist now. Uh, I, that would be particularly helpful to see how we can get more connection there. Uh, Secondly, as you just mentioned, we did need to correct, and Dan pointed out, there was two in his ward 
Yeah, We're in his ward, they're now in my ward. Yeah, Greenwich Road. Yeah. And most, uh, but not all, of Westwood. And the last one is, uh, I think, at least for me, I would like to meet with staff one-on-one -on, -one on this and on the roads, because I, there were some things that I was very puzzled as to why this one was above this one. Yeah. And we'll be happy to do that. If everybody wants to do that, we'll be happy to do that one-on-one -on -one with Council Member. <laughs> One last question. Um, there are some sidewalks that need repairing. Is that going to be a different that, a operating each year, operating cost each year, or how are we going to do that? They could be added to this list if a council member wants to either exchange or add if you're under the one million. If you want to add a repair project to the list, we'll be happy to entertain that as well. Okay. okay. One thing I should also share with you is that we do, we know that you've had all, uh, you've all had neighborhood meetings and that uh, there was feedback from the public in those. We plan to send out, by the end of the week, information on what staff heard at those meetings. Thank you. Uh, and in that regard, I have not yet gotten uh, any summary or copy of the citizen comments Comment. at the meeting and would like that as soon as possible. It'll be part of that pack. Coming Thursday. For all of it. Yeah. Um, Mr. Chairman, any questions? Yes, Mr. Wright. And it's, it's more of a process question. Anything else? If a project is not on this list that, <laughs> that I've gotten lots of feedback from constituents on, could be put to, on this list, or this list is now static moving forward? This is a very dynamic list, and it's up to the council <coughs> and the council <laughs> members to give us feedback. Right. So it can be added. Thanks. Yes. Uh, and in that regard, I would like to request an additional study um, uh, sidewalk. Ebert Street between Cherokee and South Creek Parkway. Currently, the sidewalk ends at Cherokee. Um, that is non-curb and guttered, unfortunately, from there to uh, to South Creek. So the cost would be higher. But I have I have received that request on more than one occasion in the past and thought it was on the list. My okay. oversight um, and the. Um, Of course, I am interested in, in the one-on-one -on -one meetings uh, for discussion. Mr. Taylor. Thank you. I am also interested in one-on-one in -on -one meetings. I'll just state for informational purposes, uh, at the bond referendum meeting and at a few of our last town hall meetings, uh, it has come up uh, in discussion about Runners Park Road and Cole Road. And for those of our Southeast War family who may be watching this publication, I just want to say that, that those roads, those sidewalks are on this list uh, for approval in the bond referendum. Um, and one other note, um, uh, Southwind Drive ranks high, uh, well, actually, it doesn't have a numerical score yet. That one was added because we knew it was one that the council member of the ward specifically wanted. Okay. Um, and in addition to the city share and the event of STPDA funding, I would be interested in the breakdown uh, of costs if it only went to Randall or if it only went to Eastwood. Understood. Uh, uh, I anticipate that a lot of the demand probably originates from those two side streets and it's quite possible that a lot of the cost is involved in the remaining, not all, but a lot of the cost is involved in the, in the linear footage and uh, from East went on to, to Jonestown. So. Other comments or questions? All right. Uh, thank you very much. And when would we anticipate bringing this back to the committee for further discussion? Uh, Assuming one on ones take place in June, then we'd probably bring something back in July. Okay. So looking at July timeframe. Thank you. Um, and item five, please. This is another same. Type of thing. The, the same situation. Uh, what you have is the pavement rating scores for the various projects there. Questions, comments? Mr. Clark? Um, it's all sorts of streets everywhere, including the West Ward. I gather the scores are that there would not be any with lower scores that are not on here, that we've kind of taken the, the worst streets. We've, <clears throat> Ms. McCullough, we've got the, the revised list, I believe. You do. For resurfacing? Yeah. Yes. Some of the streets were left off. We just we realized that as we were sitting in the back that some of the streets were left off. So we do apologize. And what was your question, Councilmember? Just it, it, 
there's all you know there's a lot of streets in the west ward and and I, I, i'm um thank you. counting on the staff to say these are the, the ones that need it the, the worst these are the ones that need it the worst or there may be a road that's not quite as bad but it's right beside a very bad road and it's bad enough that if we don't do it now we'll be wasting money to come back and try to do it later a short piece gotcha. connected so we try to group them in that way and again i would appreciate it at some point maybe a one-on-one -on -one. this would be subject to the same process yeah. as the sidewalk yeah and let me say dan i'm not mm -hmm. sure where i want to rush into this we're not even going to approve the money till november and i would think it, at the earliest you would start in spring of 15. assuming budget or bonds are issued yeah, yeah. One thing I might suggest, though, is it's helpful in the bond referendum the more specificity you have. So one thought we had was by the end of the summer, would council want to have at least some of the, some of the projects specifically identified uh, to help the citizen committee say what specifically we're going to get? It might be less critical with the <coughs> repayment than with the sidewalk since that's new infrastructure. Um, I, I'm, I'm inclined to think that identifying by August, say, um, the the priority sidewalks would See, I be think helpful. everybody wants a sidewalk and everybody wants some street research. So 2% are going to be happy and 98% are going to fall. And only got X amount of money. That's probably worth it. Fine. We no, we can we can certainly <laughs> take that approach. You know, approve the money and then we'll fight out where it goes. But <laughs> well, I mean, something could happen between now and then. I mean, I do know of one sidewalk and it's just one section, mm -hmm. but it is that much higher because of the tree roots. The you can look under the slab. I'm assuming that slab's about four inches thick, something like that. Mm -hmm. It's four inches out of out of grade. Now that's just one section. It's got to be fixed. Uh, but I don't know if I got time to walk every sidewalk in the West Ward to come up with them. But but I, I think I could give me some spray paint. But I mean I, that's not worth putting on the list. The the one square beside the tree at the intersection of uh, see the Westover and uh, Reynolds. Hmm. One, I mean when you get so specific. One scenario, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, that you could look at would be to identify those that you know you want to do and then hold a reserve of some additional money mm -hmm. for things that pop up during the period that this bond package will cover. Obviously, there will be things that happen, things will change over the many years, or several years, uh, before the next bond referendum. And so if you want to identify 80% of what the money would be used for, as Mr. Garrity has indicated, for the benefit of the Citizens Committee, and then say that the rest would be held for future needs uh, that would be determined then that's another possibility that you could exercise. Yeah, that, that might be better, yeah, because, I mean. That's actually, a, I, I think, that's a, a very like meritorious it. suggestion. Because with the roads, I'm looking at about seventy, eighty thousand dollars $80,000 contingency. So maybe that just goes under other. Maybe there's, because there are going to be some exceptions that we, you know, a little fix here or there. Okay. Then, I, then let's, let's consider working that in in some fashion and it might it it, it could even vary from board to board yeah did you have no I, I i'm a little bit different uh from the council member from the westwood i think i have a strong idea of where i want to see sidewalks and pavings you know based on connectivity based on uh, community input and there have been a lot of areas that have been overlooked for a good deal and you know i know exactly where they what where they are because i've been hearing about them for the last five years mm -hmm. so as soon as the money is approved we're going to go and get those done immediately but it's good to have some contingency uh, just in case something pops up yeah. it, but everywhere is different if i could point out this this was released several years ago the west reward has the fewest linear feet of sidewalk of any of the wards so I, i've got <laughs> again fewer sidewalks than anybody so i'm gonna get a lot of phone calls <laughs> <laughs> That comes along with the territory. Yeah. And I don't remember who had the most, but I know I had the least. All right. Well, we'll be looking at this then. Is there further discussion of item five? And, and Mr. Chairman, remember we have a sixth item information on the uh, commercial plaza. Yes, well, that's right. I didn't get that until meeting start time. So. 
Excuse me. Um, we will, of course, this continues to be held in committee and it will be coming back this summer uh, for the discussion. Um, we will now go to the new item six, please. Item G6, commercial plaza improvements. Uh, and Mr. Good afternoon. Raleigh. Yes, good afternoon, Chairman Bessie and members of the committee. Uh, staff just wanted to take this opportunity to make you aware of some uh, improvements that will be coming to Marshall Plaza. Uh, if you'll remember, last September, uh, Council passed a resolution uh, honoring former Council Member Wanda Marshall for her service uh, to the City Council. Uh, what we have proposed are some enhancements that will officially mark the renaming of Civic Plaza to Marshall Plaza. And you have before you a schematic, uh, a rendering of that uh, sort of upfit and improvement. Um, funds for this project have already been allocated. Uh, they're available and were uh, designated specifically for improvements to Civic Plaza. Uh, so this is just an item for your information. And Mr. William Morrison, our, our park superintendent, is here. If you have any specific questions regarding the design, implementation, timeline, or anything of that nature. Mr. Turner, now I remember that you'd asked me last week about adding this. Um, uh, is there a time factor here in terms of when this would be coming forward with a request for approval? Well, Mr. Raleigh will explain, I think, but I don't think we're asking for approval. Just wanted to brief the committee on it before it went forward. I think the funding and everything have been approved. Am I right? Yes, that is correct. Okay. Funding for the project's already been approved. This is just uh, just an information item. All right, thank you. Um, questions? For either uh, Mr. Raleigh or Mr. Royston. Comments, Mr. McIntyre. I know that the uh, downtown Winston partnership had a sleeve installed for a yes. Christmas tree at this site. And my understanding is that's been moved or will be moved to accommodate that? Uh, we did have a conversation regarding that. Um, it will be moved. Uh, we actually uh, asked if they would rather have it as part, you know, kind of incorporated into that brick paver schedule that you see or moved out into the landscape. They actually preferred that it be moved out into the landscape, but it will remain. And my second question is uh, what does former council member Marshall think of the design? Uh, she was uh, elated. To, uh, we showed her, and she was very pleased with, with the design. Uh, Great. What is a solar paver? <laughs> I'll ask Mr. Royston to come up and ex Mr. Royston. explain that for you. Uh, uh, chairman, members of the committee, um, the solar pavers, um, uh, to be honest, we haven't, we've never used them before. But as a paver that has several LEDs, it's a crystal paver, has a rechargeable battery pack on the bottom side of it. Um, Winston-Salem Winston -Salem being uh, the, the strong arts component that really helps define our city. I wanted to kind of do something that was innovative, artistic. So we incorporated um, LED, solar LED lighting into the paver pattern of the, uh, of the plaza. Um, it's actually going to be extremely cool. So it, it soaks up the... Daylight and yes. blows at night. Yeah, yes. Tonight. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Other questions or comments? Uh, thank you, gentlemen. Is there anything else? No. <laughs> uh, if there is nothing further for the committee today, we will stand adjourned. Thank you so much. With the, the gentleman who's got the sink, he qualified.